I was asked on a recent live stream that I did with Dish with D if I had any gingerbread cheesecake or eggnog cheesecake recipes. At the time, I didn't, but I knew I needed to work on them. So this is the test recipe for my eggnog cheesecake. I've already gotten the gingerbread down, but now I just have one more to go. So if you want to have some holiday cheesecakes, and hopefully I have one for you here, Stick around because we're going to be experimenting with this one coming up next. Hello and welcome to my test kitchen. My name is Roy. I'm a home cook and amateur baker and I'm here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now, yes, you did hear me correctly. I did say test kitchen. It's not just my jaw, which seems to be giving me a little trouble today. For those of you who may be new, I have neuropathy and myopathy, and it affects my muscles and nerves and my jaw and throat seem to be affected today so hopefully i won't need to add subtitles but i did say test kitchen because if you follow me on social media particularly if you are part of dish with d's crew i did share a recipe i was experimenting with a picture of a gingerbread cheesecake that i had made and it had been a request from Karen during our live interaction, mine and Dee's, and that was one of the requests that I had. So was also from Karen an eggnog cheesecake. The gingerbread cheesecake came out fairly well. It just needed a few little tweaks. And I wanted to experiment on an eggnog cheesecake. And I thought, why don't I just record myself doing the test right here? So you're going to get to see me experimenting on an eggnog version of the cheesecake. But I will have both the gingerbread and the eggnog listed on the blog. And if I decide that this recipe needs any tweaks after I've made it here, I will adjust it before putting it onto the website. But we're going to go over the ingredients that I am planning on using as of now. I have here, of course, my cooking spray, and I have an eight inch cake pan. This is about a three inch height. You can get away with having one about two inches high for this. And you can also make this in a spring form pan, which is one of those pans that has a little buckle on the side and it helps to open it up so you don't have to worry about tipping it out of the pan. But I wanted to make sure that I did it in a cake pan because a lot of you may not have spring form pans. Now, I know Pound Dropper with her cheesecakes often does them in a pie plate. You can do it in an eight inch deep dish or a nine inch regular pan as well. And that will save you from having to tip it out because you can cut it right in the pan. But I wanted to do it this way because I wanted it more like an actual cheesecake, a nice round thick cheesecake. Here I have 32 ounces of plain non-fat Greek yogurt. And I'm just using whatever I happened to find at the store that was cheapest. This hood is fairly new and it was only like $5, so I opted for that one. But any non-fat Greek yogurt that you use is fine. Here I have one cup of almond milk. Now the almond milk and the yogurt and the eggs that will be coming up are all at room temperature to help incorporate them more easily into the batter. Now here I have four whole eggs and here I have two egg yolks. Now yes, one of the yolks is broken, but it's not going to matter. What I did was I separated the eggs and I saved the whites for something else. Typically what I'll do with them, especially if they get any yolk in them and you won't be able to whip them up like you would with egg whites normally, I will just throw them into some scrambled eggs the next time I make them. So they will not go to waste. Now that might seem like a lot of eggs, but this is an eggnog cheesecake. So I wanted to make sure that I had that eggy flavor in there and I'm using the yolks to also improve the richness. Now, as I said, some of these may change. I may end up reducing the number of eggs. I don't know yet. This is the test kitchen. This is an experiment. So we shall see how it comes out. But for now, that is what I'm planning on using. 
Here I have three quarters of a cup of sugar replacement. You can use whatever brand you prefer. Here I have a one ounce packet of sugar-free vanilla pudding mix. Now you can use sugar-free vanilla or white chocolate. Either one of those is mild enough not to interfere with the eggnog flavor that we're going for. Here I have two tablespoons of flour. That's just going to help as a binder to help hold this together more like a regular cheesecake. I have three quarters of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg and one teaspoon of rum extract. Now those are going to give us more of that eggnog flavored nutmeg in particular. If you don't have rum extract, you can't find it. You could replace it with two tablespoons of actual rum. It may alter the bites or points a little bit, but it shouldn't affect it by much. And nutmeg is fairly strong. I'm going with three quarters of a teaspoon because this is going to be a big cheesecake. I'm hoping that it won't be too strong, but if it is, I will change it in the recipe and make sure that it is listed correctly before it goes up on the blog. Okay, so those are all of the ingredients. Let me shuffle a few things around and we'll get started. I have sprayed my eight inch cake pan and got that coated with cooking spray. I also have here a nine inch cake pan. You could use one larger. You just want a pan that's larger than this for at the end when we have to release it. We're going to put some hot water in here and let it sit for a minute to loosen up those edges so our cheesecake has less chance of sticking in there when we try to release it. I also have here a loaf pan, could be any size. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to half fill it with water and put this in the bottom of the oven. What that will do is create kind of a water bath that will create steam in the oven and it should prevent most of the cracks that you might get from a cheesecake typically. There is another step we're going to take later to help prevent those cracks. Now this may not eliminate them entirely and if you don't want to do those steps, you really don't have to. I'm just trying to make this more presentable. But honestly, for me, it won't matter too, too much because I will be flipping the cheesecake out of the pan onto a plate and what is the bottom will become the top. So it doesn't matter as much to me for that reason. But if you're using a springform pan or even a pie dish, it does help to reduce the chance of cracks. Does not eliminate it completely, but does lessen the likelihood. Now, if you do get cracks, just throw some Cool Whip on top or whipped cream and call it a day. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What I need to do first is to line my cake pan. If you're doing this in a springform pan, you don't have to do it. You could just line the bottom, which would make it easier to lift off the bottom of the springform pan, but you don't have to. And if you're doing this in a pie plate, you really don't need to do that because you'll probably be cutting it in the pie plate. But I did say I wanted to try this in a cake pan, which is how I did the original gingerbread one, and it released very well. So if you are doing it in a cake pan, don't worry, it'll all be fine. Now, as I said, I've sprayed this and I have here an eight inch cake round. I buy these from Amazon because I don't want to have to go around cutting them. But if you don't have any and you want to make some, just put your cake plate on top of a piece of parchment, draw a line around it, and then just cut it out a little smaller because you're cutting it from the outside. But the reason I also have a sheet of parchment here is because I'm going to be lining the sides. I don't want this to stick anywhere if I can help it. So I'm going to line this all. So I'm just going to drop in my eight inch round and I usually I'll do this with cakes as well. I'll get that into the cooking spray and then flip it over so that it sticks to the bottom but then also has some of the cooking spray on the top to help release from the cake. And now for the lining of the sides. I'm just going to hold this up to the cake pan and get an approximate height and fold it there. And I'm going to line up these edges to make sure I get a fairly straight line and then fold that over again because I do want two strips because this is not going to be long enough. If you have a roll, you should be fine with pulling out a stretch 
Then I'm just going to cut along those creases and pray my shaky hands don't go too far out of line. But we're going to end up cutting one of these down a little bit because we don't need them both this long. All right, so I have my two strips here and I'm just going to bring back in my cake pan and then I'm just going to line around the edge and because of the cooking spray, it'll help this to stick in place. And then I'm gonna take the other piece. Obviously this is longer than I need, so I'm just going to start it a little ways in from the end of one of those edges. Bring it over to the other side and just trim that down so I don't have too long of a piece in there. And just smooth that all out. Now this is just there to help me release it from a cake pan. As I said, I wanted a real cheesecake look to this. Cause like, if you're gonna serve it for the holidays, especially you wanna have a certain look to your cheesecake. And that's what I'm going for. So let me set this aside and we'll mix everything up. I have put the entire container, 32 ounce container of Greek yogurt into a large bowl. I'm going to add in the eggs and the egg yolks. And then I just want to blend these to combine into a homogenous mixture. Okay, it's all a creamy yellow color, which reminds me of eggnog. Then I'm going to take the packet of sugar-free pudding mix and add that into the egg and yogurt mixture. And I'm going to add this in before I add in the other ingredients because I want that pudding mix to disperse throughout because that's going to help to thicken our cheesecake here. So just mix that in. Okay, and it is starting to thicken up even though I just added that in and it will thicken up a little bit more as that sits. But now we're going to add in the rest of the ingredients. Almond milk, sugar replacement, flour, nutmeg, and rum extract. And just blend this all together. All right, and I did smell the batter just to see if I was getting that eggnog feeling. It's a little mild, so I may end up increasing the nutmeg and the rum extract, but I'm gonna do it as is for now, just so I can see where I am at the base and increase it or decrease it later as I need to. So now I'm gonna bring in my prepared pan and we are going to add in our batter. All right, and then I'm going to do this tap it a couple of times on the counter just to release any air bubbles that may be trapped in there. All right, so this is going to go into a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Generally, when you check a cheesecake, the center is going to be jiggly. I remember years ago, a friend of mine was making a cheesecake for a Christmas Eve party that we were doing and she baked it and baked it and baked it because the center wasn't setting. And at that time, I didn't know what the deal was either. So she overbaked the cheesecake because the center wasn't set. The center will not be set on a cheesecake. It won't be liquid, but it will jiggle a little bit. And I'll show you that at that point. Another way to check it is it should reach 150 degrees in the middle. So that's another way you can read it with an instant read thermometer stuck in the center. If it comes to 150 or slightly above, it should be all set. First, I'm gonna get it in the oven. I am going to bring you over to the oven with me because I do wanna show you about the water bath, the loaf pan, if you decide to use that. So let me move the camera around so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm not sure where my head will be cut off, so I'm crouching a little bit. I do have my loaf pan over here with water halfway filled. You don't have to use a loaf pan. You could use like a nine by 13, whatever. You just wanna get some water in here to create some steam and to help this to bake a little more gently. So I'm going to open this up and here is my loaf pan half filled with water. You don't want need it too full. And I'm going to put it on the very bottom of the oven very carefully so that I don't burn myself. Hopefully I don't have a spasm about now and just get that in there. Now you could put it on the lower shelf and just move the middle shelf or remove the third shelf. I'm going to now put this on top of the top shelf, which is in the middle of the oven. So now I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes just to check it, make sure that it's where it needs to be. And it should be about 45 minutes. 
Now I'll be back to show you another little trick to help keep those cracks at bay. So I'll be back. All right, so it has been actually an hour and the pan is much more full than it was on the gingerbread. I think it's because I added milk, which the other one did not have, plus extra eggs. So I am going to alter the size pan you should use and maybe even some of the ingredients because let me show you what it looks like and what we're going to do from here. I did check it already, but I'll show you again. We're going to turn it off. We're going to open up the door and just give it a little shake. And it's very shaky in the center. But just to be sure, I did take the temperature. So I'm going to check again right in the middle. Coming up at 155. There's a lot of liquid in there. So I'm not sure if this is going to work out. But before we find out, what we're going to do is put this back in here. We're going to remove the water from the bottom, which we don't need anymore. And now we're going to close the door mostly. We're going to leave it open slightly here so that the heat can escape. But this is going to allow the cheesecake to cool more slowly than if you took it out right away. That can cause cracking when you take it out and there's too big of a difference in the temperature. So by letting it slowly cool down in here for about 45 minutes to an hour, that's going to allow this to not crack if it's going to work at all. As I said, it does look a bit different than the other one, but we do have a few more steps to go before we can check for sure. So I'm going to let this cool door open slightly and then I'll be back. Okay, so now it's removed from the oven and you can see, I think, that it has shrunk down in there a bit more. It's not as inflated as it was. It was coming right up to the edge of the pan and now it's back down to about where it was when I set it in there. And there is a slight crack in the center. There's also some moisture in there that makes me think that I may need to reduce the liquid in here, but we'll find out in a while now we have to let this cool to room temperature then we need to refrigerate it for at least three to four hours i may wait and do it overnight and just share this in the morning i'm not sure yet but i do hope that this test works out as well as the gingerbread did fingers crossed but we'll find out for you in a second for me in a few hours I'm back. My cheesecake has been in the fridge for about three hours and I think it should be firm enough, it seems to be, that I can now try to remove it. Now, a couple of little tricks. I know we have it lined so that it makes things easier, but I'm also going to slide a knife around the edges. But I don't want to do it with a cold knife. What I have here is a container of hot water and I have my larger pan, cake pan, also filled with hot water. That's going to help us release this. I'm going to dip my butter knife into the hot water and then dry it off. I just want it hot, not wet. And then I'm just going to slide it gently around the edges of the pan here, just in case anything ended up getting stuck to the pan. Now I'm going to bring in my other cake pan, my larger cake pan. There's just about maybe an inch of hot water in the bottom. We just want to get the bottom and sides heated, but this is going to take the place of a lot of that water. So the water is going to rise more than it is right now. So I'm just going to stick that in there. And you can see here that it's floating, which means that water is getting all around there. And what that's doing is helping to melt anything that might be adhering to the pan so that it'll soften up and help it to release. So we're just gonna give that a minute or two to warm up. All right, so it's been about a minute and a half. I'm gonna take this out and I wanna wipe down the pan so that it's not too wet when I try to turn it out for two reasons. I don't want it to slip from my hands, but I also don't want a lot of water to get into the cheesecake. 
Move this aside and bring in my plate. And what I'm going to do is put the plate over top of the cheesecake and then flip it. And I think I heard it slide out, so I think. There it is. And there is a little bit of moisture on top, so I will just dab that a little bit because I don't want this to remain too moist. Now let's see how it cuts and later I'll see how it tastes. But to cut a cheesecake, what you want to do is have a tall glass of hot water and you're going to dip your knife into it and let that warm up just like we did with the butter knife. But this is going to help us make smooth cuts through the cheesecake. So once that's heated up enough, just take it out and dry it off and then just go right in. Came out perfectly, but after each cut, you do want to soak it again in the hot water. So that way you don't start to accumulate any cheesecake on the knife that is then going to drag through. So I turned it, now I'm going to do it in the other direction just to make four slices. Then through each of those, I'm going to cut. This is going to serve eight. And last cut there. Yes, I am eyeballing it because I don't want to deal with a ruler right now. But now to show you what one of these slices will look like, I'm going to just slide in and pull out one slice of the cheesecake. And there you have it. Now, as I said, we haven't tried this yet. This is a test. So I will let you know right here how it did. And if there are any changes, I will be putting them on the recipe that will be on the blog. So don't worry about that. Okay, so rather than writing on the screen here and having you read something, I figured I would come in with a little clip to let you know what my feedback is on how this went. As I mentioned, it was too wet. The texture was pretty good, but it was just too wet. So as I've already kind of noted uh, along this video, I will either reduce or eliminate the almond milk. I'm thinking of reducing it to a quarter cup just because I think it did help with the texture, but it was just way too wet. And the flavor was good. The nutmeg was just right, but I am going to increase the rum extract. And you could use regular rum, you could use brandy or whiskey, whatever you typically add to your eggnog, you could use that in place of the rum extract. But this recipe for the eggnog will not go up just yet. I want to do one more test before I actually put it up, but the gingerbread cheesecake recipe will be up and I will link to that down below. But there you have my experiment for an eggnog cheesecake. Now I'm going to give you the bites, points, and calories, and macros for what I've done here. Now if I make any changes to the recipe, I will update all of this information directly on the recipe. I'm also going to give you the bites, points, calories, and macros for the gingerbread, which you didn't see me make, but it's very similar to this, and that recipe will also be up on the blog. Now as I said, this will serve eight people. And each of these slices is only going to be one Better Balance Bite or Old Blue Point. I'm on the Healthy Better Balance Plan, which is equivalent to the old WW Blue Plan, which is approximately where their current plan is. Now, if you are following calories, the calories for one serving would be 134. And if you are following macros, the fat would be 3.4 grams. Saturated fat would be one gram. Protein would be 14.7 grams. Carbs would be 28.8 grams. Fiber would be 0.5 grams and sugars would be 4.2 grams for one eighth of this cheesecake. Now for the gingerbread, it's going to be the same number of servings. It's also going to be the same number of bites or points per serving, just one. 
But if you were following calories, the calories for one serving of the gingerbread would be 123. And if you were following macros, the fat for the gingerbread would be 2.1 grams. Saturated fat would be 0.7 grams. Protein would be 13.9 grams. Carbs would be 23.7 grams. Fiber would be 0.5 grams. And sugars would be 5.6 grams for the gingerbread version of this cheesecake, which I already tested and made adjustments to. This is the one that's still in the testing phase, but you already know by now whether I liked it and whether it needed any tweaking. Now, if you enjoyed your little trip to my test kitchen, I would love it if you would give me the usual like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video. And if you want the recipe for either of these holiday cheesecakes, they will be, of course, linked on my blog, and I will link directly to each recipe down in the description box, as well as to the blog itself. Now, if the eggnog hasn't been perfected yet, I will delay posting this one. The gingerbread will be up, but I'm going to test this one first and see if it's worthy of going up. But also down in the description box, you can find my Amazon storefront, my Built Bar Rewards, Fetch Rewards, and my social media if you want to follow me over there. I have my Instagram and three Facebook groups that I'm part of. So check out the description box for all sorts of information. Well, I think it is time to give this a little taste test, and I really hope we enjoy it. But until next time, bye.